Shri Guru Venamaha. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yang Bhutal Iswayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam. Pandeham Siguro Siyuta Padakamalam Sigurum Vaishnavam Scha Si Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Dragatam Bitam Tansa Jivam. Sadvaitam Sarvaduttam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Bitam Scha. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Panchari Ne Nirvise Sasunya Vari Pasyat Yade Satari Ne Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaste Te Taptakanchana Gaudangi Radhe Vrindavane Sri Vikavana Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Panchakalpa Tarupis Chakri Pasindu Pai Pachapatita Nam Pavane Gyo Vaishnave Vyonamo Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhuniti Nanda Sutvaita Gadakar Srivasati Kaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're uh, continuing exploring this particular section of the Bhagavatam where Mipritu Maharaj is um, encouraging and in a forceful way for Mother Earth to reveal her bounty her supply of bounty within her, which was demoniac. And therefore, there wasn't any sacrifices being performed because of lack of sacrifices and because of the very evil king ruling the world. Uh, they were more and more scarcity. We explored this point in detail yesterday and we'll try to uh, expand on it a little bit more today. Vatsam kalpayan me vira, yenaham vatsalatavan, dokshik shira mayam kamam, anurupam chidohanam, dogdaram cha mahabaho, bhutanam bhutabhavanaha, anam ipsitam urjwaswad, bhagavan vachite yadi. Translation. And the earth is speaking in the form of a cow. She took the form of a cow. Oh, great hero. She's addressing Maharaj Pritam, protector of the living entities. If you desire to relieve the living entities by supplying them sufficient grain, and if you desire to nourish them by taking milk from me, we should make arrangements to bring a calf suitable for this purpose and a pot in which the milk can be kept, as well as a milkman to do the work. Since I will be very affectionate towards my calf, your desire to take milk from me will be fulfilled. Srila Prabhupada's purport. There, these are nice instructions for milking a cow. The cow must first have a calf so that of affection for the calf, she will voluntarily give sufficient milk. There must also be an expert milkman and a suitable pot in which to keep the milk. Just as a cow cannot deliver sufficient milk without being affectionate to her calf, the earth cannot produce sufficient necessities without feeling affection for those who are Krishna conscious. Even though the earth being in the shape of a cow may, take, may be taken figuratively, the meaning herein is quite explicit. Just as a calf can derive milk from a cow, all living entities, including animals, birds, bees, reptiles, and aquatics, can receive their respective foods from the planet Earth, provided that human beings are not asa or adrita, rata, as we have previously discussed. 
when the human society becomes un asa or ungodly or devoid of Krishna consciousness, the entire world suffers. If human beings are well behaved, animals will also receive sufficient food and be happy. The ungodly human being, ignorant of his duty to give protection and food to, to the animals, kills them to compensate for the insufficient production of grains. Thus, no one is satisfied, and that is the cause for the present condition in today's world. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So here, the... Um, Guru Maharaj, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, Guru Maharaj, your voice is very low. Guru Maharaj, um, your mic. Uh... Yeah, okay. Let me see what I can do here. Hare Krishna. Is that better? Yeah, a little bit better, Guru Maharaj. Little, not much though. Yeah, not much though, yeah. I think it's my voice is somewhat uh, yeah. not not very strong today for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, that's okay, good manager. Yeah, you can continue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll try to speak a little louder. Mm -hmm. um, well, sacrifice is the meaning of the word sacrifice comes from the word sacrificio, which is a Latin word meaning to make sacred. And what is sacred? That is in relationship to the supreme source of all sacredness or the Supreme Lord. Life is meant to be in connection with the source of life. When life is cut off from the source and acts contrary to the source or doesn't acknowledge the source, then it's no longer life. It's just causing uh, imbalance in today's world within the individual, within the family, within the community, within the society, within the nation, ultimately within the world. Mm -hmm. So sacrifice is necessary here and Prabhupada really goes right to the point and sums it up because of the lack of Krishna consciousness, the whole world is suffering. Mm -hmm. And this is not some um, proud statement. It is actually the, the foundation because when the earth itself is a product of the energy of, the, of God. And therefore, when the earth is sufficiently be giving, get, getting its sacrifice, rather than being exploited for its resources, um, then everybody gets what everything they need nicely. But when there is no sacrifice performed or little sacrifice or sacrifice is simply in order to increase the propensity to exploit the earth, then what you have is um, a very dissatisfied society. And people are, as it says here, no one is satisfied. And that is true because no one is living according to the laws of God. Here the earth is making uh, some proposition on how, how to bring things back. She wants to start by giving her milk. And so she's requesting that an, a calf be brought. And Prabhupada makes the point, and this is natural, anyone who has some understanding of, of uh, cows will understand that when the calf is there, the mother's affection for the calf is strong and therefore the mother gives her milk even more profusely because the cat, the mother's milk is actually love for the calf. Mm -hmm. So her milk is actually her love for her, her calf. 
And because the calf doesn't drink everything, the cow gives much more and there's enough for human society. So when the cow is taken care of very nicely and provided for, and not just given uh, proper service, but taking care, just like when I was in New Vrindavan, I grew up on the New Vrindavan farm community and we had cows. And we had two barns, one in the local area of the temple and one in the more distant area where the majority of the cows were kept. And uh, we would go out every day to the cow barn and see the cow, uh, cows. We would take brushes and comb their bodies with brushes and sometimes take food grains or sometimes uh, bananas or other food items and uh, feed the cows. So it was really a pleasant experience to be with the cows. It was very natural. And uh, the cows were really satisfied because um, they were receiving attention. And cows also like attention in the right way, not in the wrong way, of course. <laughs> So when the cow is taken care of nicely and provided for nicely at the same time, and then uh, the human beings can be happy. We have a society today that sees animals as uh, opportunities for uh, sense gratification and economic gain. Mm -hmm. uh, animals are not given much respect in society at all. They're always seeing what the animals can give, including bees, birds, aquatics, so many. In other words, they think that a lot of the society mistakenly thinks, and it's not so much a way of thinking, it's a way of, of not thinking, that the animals provide a balance within nature. Nature is balanced and everything works in a very balanced way. So all the species within nature uh, contribute to the overall functioning of nature accordingly. And that's God's arrangement. And the species below, below the human beings and they don't go outside of God's natural arrangement. But because of uh, the human has the independence to choose or not choose how to live their life, when they mistakenly uh, choose in the wrong way, they, the humans are also part of the balance of nature. <laughs> But we can also disrupt that whole balance by acting sinfully or against the laws of nature, against the laws of God. And when that happens, there's so many problems within the world. And so sinful life is based on ignorance. And ignorance is simply a product of not understanding one's position. Therefore, the first part of um, education in the Vedic scriptures called Sambandha. The Vedic scriptures have three categories of, uh, of uh, knowledge. Sambandha, Abhideya, and Prayojana. All, of, all the three categories, it is the most diverse of all the three. Srila Bhakti Vinoda Kaur has written extensively what is sambandha and what are the different aspects of sambandha. Sambandha simply means relationship. What is, the, what is the human being's relationship with each other? Not in a general way, but in a specific way, in the sense that Within that category of human relationships, there are different types of relationships. We have relationships between husband and wife. We have a relationship between mother and children. We have relationships between father and children. We have relationships between 
children and children, siblings. We have relationships between the earth and ourselves. We have a relationship between the spiritual master and ourselves. We have a relationship with God. So each of these relationships has certain ingredients and characteristics that make that relationship successful. And when, when that, without that knowledge, our relationships turn. And when that happens, there is not a relationship, although there is a connection between human beings in a certain category of interaction. And in that category interaction, there's always problems. So the basic principle of relationship is service. Just like you see, if you study nature, you'll see all of nature is serving something. Every, every aspect of nature is providing something for the, for the entire uh, principle of total human nature or total, total nature. So each of the animals, each of the species provides something that fits in. Nothing, there's no thing is accidental, just like there are 8,400,000 species of life. Of course, when you try to count them, you will not be able to find that number on this planet, but it means that many within the material cosmic, cosmological existence. So those 8,400,000 each have a role to play in relationship to each other and relationship to nature and relationship to the Supreme Lord. So when everyone knows or is educated in that understanding of that relationship, which is based on the principle of seva, because seva is what makes a relationship what it is. When seva is not there, or service is not there, the relationship becomes exploitative or devoid of any real happiness or value. Now the mood is service. So the living entities who are in this human species of life uh, are, if they don't serve in the right way, they're forced to serve in, the, in a way that is a form of punishment. It's a reaction. In other words, they're serving the strict uh, uh, corrective laws of material nature and therefore people suffer. But when we understand who we are, what is our role and how to have that relationship on all levels, not just on relationship with God. Of course, relationship with the Supreme Lord is the foundation for all other relationships. So one cannot have a healthy and natural relationship with others unless one is simultaneously cultivating and developing the relationship with the Supreme Lord. Because he is the foundation for all relationships as he is called Mula. Mula means the root or foundation or the source just like the whole body gets its sourceful energy from the stomach. The stomach, when the stomach is when the, just like in Ayurveda, when digestion is working nicely and the proper foods are given, the body is happy, the body is healthy. So Ayurveda works on that principle on digestion. When digestion is off, then everything else in the body is thrown off also. And then there's so many problems and ultimately diseases and uh, more and more illnesses, sicknesses, which manifest itself throughout different parts of the body, although it is coming from the, pla the platform of insufficient digestion or wrong digestion or no digestion, <laughs> like that. So... So in the same way, Krishna is the source of everything. When everything is centered towards Krishna in devotional service, then we can learn through that relationship what is our relationship with each and every one of each and every people we person we come in contact with. If we don't know the specifics of the relationship, we can at least know 
the foundation of the relationship. The specifics will come later by knowing the foundation. And again, the foundation is to serve. When we have that principle of service, rather than the principle of exploitation or the principle of getting something or gaining something through whatever we do, we lose, uh, we lose connection with ourselves and we lose connection with the objects that we're interacting with. So that mood of service is there. Of course, there are people who exploit that and serve for the sake of gaining. In other words, it's more like a, uh, I'm going to serve you because I know I can gain something from that. And I'll, you know, eventually enter into a relationship based on service. And then as a relationship develops, then my desires will also be fulfilled. Like that. And then that's a type of a uh, what we say, a perverted form of the mood of service, service in order to gain. Service should be there in order to give. And gain comes automatically by the mood of giving and not by keeping the mood of gain as prominent or foremost. So here, Mother Cow is showing. She's the source of everything. And she's saying how she gives. Because she's in the form of a cow, her affection for her calf is the source of giving sufficient milk. And so she's asking, provide the calf, provide the milkman, and provide the pot. So sometimes we say you know, the Vedas are also like that. And that the Bhagavad Gita is the cow and uh, uh, Arjuna is the calf. <laughs> And the milkman is Krishna. He's milking the, the Bhagavad Gita or the knowledge and giving it to the calf Arjuna, who's providing that information or that milk of knowledge to everyone. So we have to understand no one is independent. Everyone works in respect to the planet Earth, to God, and to each other. This idea of individual independence doesn't actually have any value. And when we try to create that, we only create disharmony. And as the Prabhupada says, because of that, uh, there is, because people are ignorant of their duty to give protection to the animals, as it says that the animals should be given dominion. The dominion doesn't mean killing them or exploiting them, it means protecting them and providing what they need in order to live out their life in a, in a very ha happy and productive way. Okay, so here's these are some points on this particular verse. So I'll, I'll uh, conclude there and see if we can open it up for further discussion. I took, I spoke on a lot of PowerPoint points without going into much detail. So perhaps in the discussion, we can go into some of the detail. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, uh, Guru Maharaj, um, for the nice class. <clears throat> I request devotees if they have any questions or comments or realizations, they can go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to you. Uh, <clears throat> you spoke about relationships and uh, how our, um, uh, how to say, uh, I, I had this experience actually that uh, how our relationship with others uh, is connected to 
uh, our relationship with ourselves. Um, I mean, in a way that um, I have a tendency to, to be a bit uh, strict and harsh uh, to others. And uh, lately I just had this feeling that uh, uh, actually I, I, I'm the same uh, with also with myself. Uh, so it's, sometimes it's, it's quite painful. And, uh, and I, I just realized that uh, these two are somehow connected. And also <clears throat> we hear that uh, when uh, we criticize uh, our, uh, others, sometimes we actually criticize something which is also present in us. So could you speak a little bit about how these two are connected and, and probably not all the time these are connected, how we can uh, notice when uh, when, when there is a connection between these two? Well, there is a connection. It says that the mind is a mirror and reflects out, outside what's inside. So our view of the world is more or less uh, an example or a prototype of our own consciousness. So as we develop our consciousness in a certain way, we, we experience expand or make expand but deliver that consciousness around us so when we understand who we are as spirit souls in our relationship with the lord then we can understand that same principle is everywhere that all living beings and krishna says are my parts and parcels they're in me in their mind so every living being is a is a spiritual being and it has and they have eternal connection with the Lord. So developing that's the foundation for understanding true knowledge. But then again, the sambandha has to be there. The sambandha is the knowledge of relationships according to the categories of people. So we learn what is our relationship with Krishna, and we learn what our relationship with Sometimes we get into a relationship and in that relationship, we start to learn what is the, what is the, what is the basis of the successful execution of the activities and make that relationship, you know, uh, beneficial. But a lot of times, but sometimes we make mistakes before we actually learn. So it's everything starts with you. You know, you have to understand who you are and what is your relationship with others and what is the foundation to make that relation what are the ingredients to make that relationship work and again it comes back on the mood of service like that so you say you're harsh on others but is it in the mood of service or is it in the mood of just satisfying the false ego uh, well in my case <clears throat> I just have these uh, expectations to others uh, to to make. Uh, for example, when when I'm I'm uh, organizing something, and and I have this expectation that others do uh, their service <clears throat> the way uh, I think it's it's proper. So it's I I don't think it's. Uh, well, that's okay. Yeah. If you're in a position of, of, of trying to help others, then you have to see, uh, see what is the ingredients that are needed. But it's how you deliver that that is also uh, how it's going to be accepted. And that deliverance also has to be understood according to the person. But uh, we do say we should be strict with ourselves and lenient with others. That is a a statement that we use quite often within our society. And that um, because we don't, there are people who are very strict with themselves and they're also very strict with others. There was one story where one very qualified lady, she had so many people that she was helping and instructing, but some of them couldn't accept her instructions or, or couldn't understand her instructions or weren't able to carry it out according to how she wanted it. And she would always say, why can't you understand it so easy? 
for her it was easy, but either she couldn't communicate it in a way that was understandable for the people she was talking to, or for whatever reason, they just couldn't understand it. And she would continually respond in the same way. It's so easy, why can't you understand? Why can't you do it? And then what happens is uh, she had a crisis in her own life and the things that became so easy for her to do were no longer like that. So Krishna arranges for her to learn her own lesson that yeah, she was so hard on everybody else, but now she can't do a lot of the things that she was doing before, which was so easy apparently before, but now her situation changed. And Krishna taught her, yeah, why are you so hard on everyone else? Now you're in a, a, a situation where you need uh, some compassion, some help. But she was more like the strict discipline area because she was so qualified. But then Krishna took her qualifications away and he showed her, you know. So, yeah, as a teacher, you have to teach in such a way as they can understand. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, it's actually, uh, I had this feeling that uh, sometimes we understand that uh, Krishna can take our wealth, but, uh, but uh, it's, sometimes it's more difficult to understand that abilities are the same, that actually he can give or take any abilities. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and he can also give you more. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, in the class, Guru Maharaj, he said uh, this mood of uh, very little respect or even acknowledgement or care for animals is very prevalent. You know, most people are all about humans. You know, it is us and we our needs and how everything should revolve around us. How can we change this mindset so that people can understand that it's not just about humans, it's about whole of nature and the earth and all her creatures deserve care and uh, respect and good treatment. That's, that's one of the principles of knowledge. Yeah. And we call it, the, sometimes we call it the golden rule. You do unto others as, as if you would have them do unto you. But that doesn't limit oneself simply to humans. So um, there's three principles of knowledge. One, it's uh, to see all women except one's wife as mother. That's the first one. Two is to see other person's property as garbage in the street. In other words, you don't touch it. And it doesn't belong to you. You just be satisfied with what God arranges for you. And the third is... Uh, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And Prabhupada uses the example, uh, you know, if somebody pinches me, I don't like it, but why should I pinch someone else? Mm -hmm. So no one, why would we do something to someone else that we don't want done to ourselves? Mm -hmm. So that's a principle of knowledge. So teaching that, is the foundation for, for giving people real knowledge. That animals are also sentient beings. They have emotions and they have, they have God-given rights also. They're also nationalists. They're born in a particular country and they're, they're meant to receive the benefits of a person who was born in that country also, not to be simply exploited or used for experiments or 
I use for simply for food. So yeah, learning again, we have to teach people. I don't know if it can be taught. It usually comes by way of God consciousness. But uh, seeing yourself in others, when you learn to see yourself in others, then you're actually seeing. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? This can only be taught as a principle of God consciousness as a part of scriptural teaching. Yeah, because Kali Yuga is so bad and people are so selfish, self-centered. Unless people come to Krishna consciousness. Nowadays, you can't teach even moral and moral and aesthetic values anymore. Because everyone is always looking for some kind of gain, whatever they do. Right. Even in spirituality. Only when you develop a relationship with the Supreme Lord can you understand that that Supreme Lord is situated in the hearts of all other living entities yeah. also. Mm. But that... But that principle of knowledge that we mentioned is the foundation for understanding how to act towards others. Very nice. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That is very, very helpful. And the law of karma works in such a way as whatever you give out, you're going to get, you're going to get back anyway. Yeah, that's so true. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Krishna. Are there any questions or comments? Devotees? <clears throat> My obeisances to all devotees, Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaji, my question is, um, let's say a particular... Can you hear me? Yes, good. Okay. Um, if one person had like a very bad experiences with other uh, human beings in their life and then... Coming to adulthood, uh, they just slowly, slowly cut themselves off from all human society, but um, they very strongly developed, um, like, you know, just surrendering unto a God and like depending fully on God. I know you mentioned, I heard it in the lecture today, you mentioned that if one develops their strong relationship with God, then they also understand their relationship with all humans. So my question is, does it work in the reverse manner? Like if uh, you develop your, if you don't have a relationship with other humans, can you develop a relationship with God? Well, that's where it starts. It starts with, with developing our relationship with the Supreme because that is our most intimate connection. We are always connected with God, but we're connected with each other through God. Without that connection or that relationship with God, which is based on service to God, then our relationships with others generally tend to be exploited or somewhat selfish. Hmm. So when, because the mood of service to God opens up the heart and then one starts to understand that every living being is also connected with God. That's part of the, the relationship with God as it develops. Otherwise, we just remain somewhat, uh, we think we might have a relationship with God, but it's not really developed beyond a certain, what we say, uh, simplified point 
just like you know when you worship the deity deity worship means to see that same deity in the heart of all living entities that's real deity worship krishna is there as paramatma super soul in all living beings and that's knowledge and that's mentioned in the in the uh, bhagavad gita Vid vidya vinaya sampane brahmani gavi hastini suni chaiva swapake cha pandita samadarshan samadarshan means equal vision so one who sees different types of living entities the same in other words they're seeing the soul within i was actually seeing correctly so uh without that foundation in our relationship with the lord our relationships tend to be more selfish and exploitative because one who develops god consciousness develops good qualities and part of that good qualities is the knowledge of their relationship with others mm -hmm. so i guess like you know everyone has different kind of personality right like some people are extroverts they can become friends with everyone and anyone some people are introverts like they just want to be alone or like you know they have social anxiety issues they cannot you know like talk to different people that they don't know things like that so is it okay if someone chooses to just stay by themselves and just do their own devotional service in their own home but not associate with anyone else in the world is that okay no, no that's not normal because we are social beings it's not personal you can't live life like that you're miserable you can try it but it, it becomes after a while this is source we have to be we want we're, we're social beings you see right now during this uh, somewhat lockdown people are, are miserable because they're not able to associate ours with others as much as they would normally do it's just natural Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Okay, Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, I think um, it looks like devotees doesn't have any more questions. Uh. Okay, we can end here and we'll continue tomorrow with the series of verses coming up. Let me see. Tomorrow I can give you the verse. But tomorrow would be uh, the same chapter, 418, verse number um, 13. Verse number 13? That's good. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, uh, for your time and association this morning. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. All the Hare. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you for the transcriptions. <laughs>